Shalom, dear friends. Let me wish you happy Purim to everyone. I mean, throughout the whole world, uh, except just a few places such as Jerusalem, Purim is today. Whereas in Jerusalem, to Purim is tonight. That means tomorrow. So we can wish to everyone happy Purim. What I would like to say is that to wish everyone happy Purim is not enough. We should also say that this happiness that we should feel on Purim requires the elucidation of the spirit. That we should think what is the importance of Purim? What is the, the philosophy of Purim? Is it enough that uh, just one day there are several mitzvot that we have to observe. I mean, let's see. First, the first mitzvah is machatzita shekel. Everyone must give a certain amount of money, not much, reminding us of half the shekel that used to be collected in the time of Beta Migdash. And of course, today we don't have Beta Migdash, so. We collect that money to give it to the poor, to give it to those who learn Torah and they cannot afford much, so we give them the money. The second mitzvah is matanot laivyonim, the gifts to the poor, again the poor. I mean, when you give, <clears throat> real happiness is when you give. Of course, the one who receives the money is happy also. But there is such a thing that when you give, you feel happiness. Why? Because the air, the atmosphere is changed when you help each other. When you help people who cannot afford much and you help them, you feel very much great happiness in the heart. And then we have the mitzvah of reading the Megillah and publicizing the the great miracle of Purim. I mean, that was not just any miracle. It was a, fa a fact that uh, the Jewish people were in grave danger of total annihilation. When Haman rose to be the most important man in the empire of Ahasuerus, the Persian Empire, and because of his hatred against the Jews, he decided that he should, that uh, the, the, the Jewish people must disappear, must be destroyed. God forbid. We all know the story. We have to publicize the story by reading the Megillah. We read the Megillah. Uh, I mean, there are many people that come to the synagogue. And even at home, one should read the Megillah to his family. And that's how we read this formidable story when the Jewish people were under threat of total, total destruction. And finally, and ultimately, everything was turned aside, uh, upside down and uh, the situation changed. Haman was destroyed with all his uh, followers and the Jewish people rose to the maximum of respect and honor with Esther the queen, Mordechai the second, I mean the minister of the king. A tremendous, tremendous salvation. The day of Purim requires from us a lot of thinking. What is it that, uh, that we have been saved from? Let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, before what happened to our forefathers, apparently the Jewish people was again lacking in their observance of the mitzvot. As you know, whenever 
the situation is quite a blessing when there is prosperity and everything the Jews they start forgetting their obligations towards the Almighty God and that's when Haman appears Haman is the seed of Amalek what brought Amalek I mean just last week last Shabbat we read the parasha Zachor at Asher Asalecha Amalek Zachor means remember to remember is to make an effort of the mind to have to think that we, we almost were going to be destroyed by Amalek but instead it was Amalek who was destroyed but still the seed of Amalek keeps on threatening the Jewish people the existence of the Jewish people in every generation so the situation in Purim was reversed totally as we say everything became contrary to the situation that was expected and Baruch Hashem the Jewish people survived same story in every time it's not only the Purim there is only one problem what is it exactly that we can distinguish the difference between hard times for the Jewish people versus prosperous times and blessed times for the Jewish people of course uh, I mean instinctively people would answer of course we prefer a time of blessing right rather than time of uh, of curses God forbid nobody wants to suffer even in the Talmud we find there is a story of Rabbi Yochanan who went to visit Rabbi El Azar who was extremely sick so he went to him and he said to him do you want to suffer our suffering are uh, uh, suffering okay with you the answer of Rabbi Lazar, no, he said, no. Lohem velo sekharam, I don't want suffering. I don't want also the reward for the suffering. Ah, that means there is a reward for suffering. And the reward here does not mean necessarily only what will be in the world to come in the future. I mean, suffering has also its good points it is true that others prefer not to suffer but there are people we find in the Talmud also for example the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Rabbi El Azar he used to invite suffering as the Talmud says he used to say Bo'u alai sorim, come he invited them as he chased them out in the morning but at night he would say come, come in please so what does it mean those two stories mean that there are two categories of thinking there are those who who see and and uh, acknowledge the fact that suffering has also its good points and obviously those people who say that we prefer prosperity and blessing in two words this is what we say Arur Haman or Baruch Mordechai. Arur Haman means the curse of Haman or that Haman is cursed. But it is also an expression to show that it, a time a hard, of hardship for the Jewish people, a time of hatred. But versus Baruch Mordechai, Baruch Mordechai, blessed is Mordechai, Mordechai symbolizes the Jewish people and when there are times of prosperity for the Jewish people what's better that's the point the point is that sometimes we do not know what is the difference as I have ex explained with those two stories of Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Sh the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai what do we prefer the Talmud says in Masechet Megillah one has 
to intoxicate himself on the day of Purim until he will not be able to distinguish between a curse is Haman, right, or blessed is Mordechai. Does not make sense. If really the sages wanted us to intoxicate ourselves to the point of losing our understanding, they don't have to use this kind of expression. All they have to do is go ahead and get drunk to the point of uh, going on the floor. Why do they have to use this kind of philosophical phrase saying until you will not be able to distinguish between Arur Haman and Baruch Mordechai? This is something to think about. I offer the explanation, the following explanation, as I have already said part of it. Purim is a great day. As I said, we give gifts to the poor, we help the poor. The Talmud says anyone who, uh, want, who opens his, ha his hand to you and he wants you to give him some money, don't you refuse the day of Purim is a day of love, is a day of fraternity and solidarity. We were in danger, in grave danger of total, total annihilation. And thank God, God has protected us and we came out winners. So it's a day of reflection. It's a day in which there's more love, by giving Machatzita Shekel, Matanot Laivyonim, the the reading of the Megillah, publicizing the, the miracle that happened to us, and also food and drinks and everything. No question about it. But at the same time, what is required from us is to think. So now, let's see what is that phrase that says that we have to, to get intoxicated. It's impossible that our sages meant that we should be drunk to death. It's impossible. It is known that for prayer, for example, a person who is drunk, it's an abomination if he prays. He should not pray. It's impossible that our sages would be for this kind of thing. Therefore, we have to explain it this way. It says in the Midrash that there are four categories of drunkenness. If you drink one cup of wine, you are considered like a, a lamb. It's, you know, it's only a first category, which means if you drink a little, then you are not uh, special. You, st you just are a simple person. Nothing has changed in you. If you go to the second level, two cups of wine, our sages said, then you are like a lion. We will explain that. You, you, you gain strength. But our sages mean always the strength of the spirit, which means more understanding. The third category is already a problem. If you drink three cups of wine, which means three, the third level, of drinking, then you become like a, a like a, an animal, an animal who is, on one hand, innocent, but also could be troublesome. But there is a fourth category, the worst kind. If you drink four cups, not exactly four cups. Many people drink four cups and nothing happens, like we do the night of Pesach. But it means the fourth category, which means you drink excessively. Then you become like a, a pig. Right? What is it that our sages want from us? They want us to go to the second level that give us more intelligence. Our sages say in the Talmud in Masechet Berachot that if a person drinks modestly wine, he could gain the strength of his spirit, which means he will become smarter. But if he drinks too much, 
then he loses his mind. What our sages meant is the second level of drinking to be like a, like a lion, which means he has potential, strength and potential. Why? Because on the day of Purim we have to be able to think more than any other day. And what is the thinking that, that we should have? The thinking is the question, what's preferable? Arur Haman, cursed Haman, or Baruch Mordechai, blessed is Mordechai. What is the difference between them? I mean, literally it means, what's the difference between times of distress and suffering for the Jewish people, or times of prosperity and blessing of the Jewish people? Of course, everyone wants a blessing, everyone wants prosperity, but we have to admit that prosperity and happy times have caused the Jewish people to lose many of its members from to assimilation. On the, on the other hand, days of suffering were, of course, terrible for the Jewish people, but at the same time it kept us together and that's how we survived. There are philosophers who, th who, who say that anti-Semitism, for example, was the primary cause for the existence and survival of the Jewish people. Now, everybody thinks that anti-Semitism was to our detriment. Yes, it is true. But at the same time, it kept us alive. Imagine if we were like any other nation, not persecuted, not uh, uh, always hated, then we would have disappeared. I mean, we Jews also are human beings. They are also weak, like any other one. In the time of blessing, then they, they forget about God, and automatically they become like the other nations. Of course, we, we don't want to lose our prosperity. We want prosperity. But at the same time, it's easier to lose your Jewish identity when you are prosperous and among, uh, in time of prosperity and nobody persecutes you. It, it has, what I am saying is true. I mean, what we lost through assimilation in the last 100, 150 years is more than the millions that we have lost during the Holocaust. Go and check and find out. But the Jewish people is still Am Israel Chai. The Jewish people is still alive. There is a great probability that anti-Semitism and the hatred are those that kept us lonely, but surviving. What is the cause for the Jewish people to survive? We said anti-Semitism. That's called Arur Haman. Prosperity was dangerous, but also preferred. That's Baruch Mordechai. On the day of Purim, we have the obligation to use our mind to find out that we don't know the difference between that or that. What is preferable? We don't, we don't know. We all want prosperity, but at the same time we cannot deny the fact that suffering has been the cause for our survival. As Jews, of course. There are two great forces. One force is spiritual, the other force is physical. The spiritual force is in the Shabbat. In the parasha, Parashat Kitisa, the coming parasha, we are going to read very explicitly the importance of respecting and honoring Shabbat and observing everything that we have to observe on the day of Shabbat. And the Torah says that anyone who does not, I mean, any Jew who does not keep Shabbat, he will be completely eradicated spiritually. The Torah says, Zachor et Yom Shabbat Remember Shabbat to sanctify it. 
That's what we read in the Ten Commandments in Parashat Yitro. What is Zachor? Remember. remember. Remember is an action of the spirit, of the intelligence of the human being. Use your intelligence and see what is it that kept us alive. If there was no Shabbat, make no mistake about it. The Jewish people cannot, cannot exist. What kept the Jewish people is the soul, the Jewish soul, that Shabbat. Because Shabbat is the sign, Ki oti beni uvenechem ledorotechem. That's the sign between God, the symbol between God and the Jewish people that we belong to Him. In all the generations, because Jews kept Shabbat, Shabbat kept us. But there is another thing also. Last week we read, Zachor et asher asalecha amalek baderech betzetchem mimitzrayim. You know, Jews also are human beings. Remember what Amalek has done unto you when you left Egypt. What is Amalek? Amalek is Amalek, number one. Then again, the seed of Amalek, that's Haman. Hitler is a seed of Amalek. All the people who hated the Jewish people and the anti-Semites are considered Amalek. Yes. Zachor, remember. Again, use your mind. Why is it that Amalek appears from time to time to destroy the Jewish people or to try to destroy the Jewish people? Because we forget God. When the Jewish people stops fearing the Almighty God, Amalek appears. Amalek means the forces, the physical threat of the, 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 the Jewish body. So, if the Jew does not keep Shabbat, Zachoret Yom HaShabbat Lekadesho, remember Shabbat, because you don't have Shabbat, you lose your Jewish soul. At the same time, you don't fear the Almighty, you stop observing the mitzvot, remember, it's possible that you will bring upon the Jewish people Amalek, Zachor, that also requires a lot of thinking. We find them both in this parasha, parashat Kitisa, the coming Shabbat. Shabbat, as we have explained. And then we, we read about the story that the Jewish people sinned, the great sin of the golden calf, idol worshipping. Idol worshipping means that they lost totally the observance and the fear of God Almighty. What is the, what do we derive from that? Very simple. We lose our worship of the Almighty and we go to other worships, Amalek could come. And it means also spiritual disappearance. Let's give, an, uh, let's, let's explain another word here. When the Jewish people sinned with the golden calf, God was so angry, he said to Moshe, Lechret ki shichet amecha. Go down from the mountain of Sinai and see that the Jewish people has, have destroyed themselves. Shichet. How did they destroy themselves? By worshipping the idols, the golden calf. So God says to Moshe, go and tell, you have to understand I have to destroy this nation. And Moshe started to pray to Hashem, please God, if you do that, then erase my name too. God promises Moshe, don't worry, I will give you another nation. Moshe says, no, I don't want another nation. And Moshe succeeded. And God forgave, as it says, Salah Varecha. But what is the danger of that? To disappear as Jews. To disappear as Jews could be either because of what brings Amalek, idol worshipping, or not fearing the Almighty and not observing any mitzvah. At the same time, Shabbat. That's the great comparison between Shabbat, Zachoret Oma Shabbat, and Zachoret Asher Asalecha, Amalek. It's either physical destruction 
or spiritual destruction. By keeping Shabbat, you are protected. Divine Presence will be with you. Your soul is protected. By keeping the laws of the Torah, you make sure Amalek will not destroy you. That's what we learn exactly from this parasha, from last parasha, and Purim in the middle. Happy Purim, my friends. May God bless you. Amen. Enjoy as much as possible Purim, but also think of the importance of Purim for the Jewish people. Shalom Aleichem.